All right, we're on to item 10A. As you all know, this year we've been celebrating 175 plus years of Lafayette history. Uh, each month, Mary McCoster, Cosker, or someone from the Lafayette Historical Society has given us a, a 10 minute explanation of an aspect of Lafayette history. And until I saw on the screen, I didn't know what tonight would be. So uh, Mary, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. And I just would like to say before I start how much I've appreciated uh, being able to do this and give you some information. And thank you too to the city and the city council for the support of the Historical Society. Okay, so we're talking about the Pony Express. The Pony Express has a short but romantic history and it included the town of Lafayette. Due to long delays in getting mail or any communication from Washington DC to California, a better mail service was needed for faster delivery. In 1845, it could take up to six months for mail to get to California by sea, shorter if the mail crossed by pack mule at the Isthmus of Panama. In 1860, it took 25 days for mail to go the southern route from St. Louis by way of El Paso, Texas, on stagecoaches to Los Angeles and then to San Francisco. After much searching, a central route that was almost due west was proposed. It was much shorter, but its use in winter had yet to be proven. The reason for faster mail service included the rumblings of an impending civil war. The government wanted to keep California and all its gold for the North. In addition, there were many people who had emigrated to the gold fields who wanted to keep in touch with relatives back home. In the 1850s, a company named Russell, Majors, and Waddell was a freight outfitter to the Army and to travelers on the Oregon and Santa Fe trails. In 1857, they had a large financial loss after 54 of their wagons were destroyed in the Utah or Mormon War. The firm did not get reimbursed by the government, which put them in shaky financial shape. The company hoped to make up for this with the contract to carry the mail to California. Their firm already had overland stage stations for mail and passenger service between the Missouri River and Salt Lake City. On January 27, 1860, William Russell learned that California Senator William Gwynn was supporting a contract for California mail service. The service was contingent on its readiness by April and the delivery of mail in 10 days. The route would be a central route, which would be open all year, even in winter. Saving hundreds of miles, the central route was needed as Texas was leaning towards the Confederate States and mail would not be able to be sent via El Paso. Whoop, sorry, too far, okay. Uh, the last train stop and telegraph terminus from the east was in St. Joseph, Missouri. It was decided this would be the starting point for the express service. Russell Majors and Waddell created a company named the Central Overland California and Pikes Peak Express Company to set up relay stations. The C, O, C, and PP later became known to its employees as clean out of cash and poor pay. Incredibly, five geographic divisions were created, division managers hired, and over 150 relay stations between St. Joseph, Missouri and Sacramento were set up. Word went out that riders weighing less than 125 pounds, who were of good character and could handle horses, were to be hired for $50 to $100 a month. Station keepers, stock tenders, and 80 riders were hired. The stations were initially from 10 to 25 miles apart. Later stations were mostly 10 to, 10 to 12 miles apart, um, about the distance that horses could gallop between stops. Riders were to ride 75 to 100 miles per day, day and night in all months of the year. Each rider was given a Bible and required to take an oath prohibiting fighting, drinking, and profanity. The writer to become the most famous in his later years was Wild Bill Cody. The horses were to be less than 15 and a half hands tall and weigh under 900 pounds. As these were small animals, they were often called ponies, 
hence the name Pony Express, but they were horses. It is believed that this group of horses cost $87,000 as they were of outstanding stock. Morgans, thoroughbreds, and pintos were used on the eastern end. Smaller, tougher animals of California stock, mustangs, would be used for the rough mountains and deserts. To keep weight down, the mail and special edition newspapers were printed on special lightweight paper and wrapped in oil skin for waterproofing. Telegrams, business letters, and government dispatches were also sent. Initially, a letter cost $5 per half ounce. Later, the fare was reduced to a dollar. Letters were franked or postmarked with a special hand stamp. The saddles were of a special abbreviated design. The mail was placed in a mochila, a special rectangular piece of leather, which was a saddle bag. There were four pockets, one at each corner, which were locked for safety. The mochila had a hole for the saddle horn and it was thrown over the saddle at each relay station. The weight of the rider kept it in place. The mochila carried 20 pounds of mail and 20 pounds of personal effects. The rider could carry a Bible, a knife, a horn to alert the station masters of their approach and a gun. Later, only water and a gun were carried. On March 31st, 1860, a special train carried 49 letters, five telegrams and a special edition newspaper from Washington DC and New York to St. Joseph, Missouri. At about 7 p.m. on April 3rd, 1860, after waiting around for hours for the train, the mail was put into the machilla and the rider left St. Joseph for points west. In San Francisco on the same April 3rd at 4 p.m., James Randall left with 85 letters to board the ship the Antelope at the wharf and travel to Sacramento. There the mail was transferred to another rider and the eastbound overland service began. For the first part of 1860, there were weekly rides from each direction. There was a halt to operations for the Paiute Indian War from May to July 1860. Stations were destroyed and men were killed between Salt Lake City, Utah and Carson City, Nevada. Once over, riders then started out twice a week, including winter, until October 1861. A total of 308 runs were made for a distance of 616,000 miles. Lincoln's inaugural address in November 1860 made it from St. Joseph to Sacramento in seven days, 17 hours. Although it was easy for eastbound riders to make the boat connection in San Francisco, it was not for westbound riders arriving in Sacramento. They were completing a long journey through all kinds of weather and Indian country, so their timing was never exact. Riders often missed the boat, which was to leave Sacramento at 2 p.m. on Saturday with no service Sunday. Then they had to ride overland from Sacramento to Oakland, where they took a ferry from Jack London Square to San Francisco. The route went through Davis, Fairfield, Cordelia, Benicia, by ferry to Martinez, Pacheco, Walnut Creek, Lafayette, and on to Oakland. Lafayette and these other towns became added stations. Lafayette House run by N.P. Lake was the hotel and way station on the southwest corner of Mount Diablo Boulevard and Moraga Road, where a Pony Express monument stands today. The rider came from Martinez, changed horses in Lafayette, galloped through Orinda over Fish Ranch Road, then down Claremont Avenue, Telegraph Avenue and Broadway. He then caught a ferry, the Oakland, for the crossing to San Francisco. After the first unofficial run through Lafayette, the Pony Express stopped twice more in 1860 and 17 times in 1861, always westbound. The completion of the nationwide telegraph network on October 1860 doomed the Pony Express. Service ended shortly thereafter. The venture never panned out as a financial success and bankrupted the owners. However, the Pony Express contributed to the Western frontier in many ways. The central route became the basis for telegraph service and the Transcontinental Railroad, which was completed in 1869. Faster mail from east to west was now a reality. California's loyalty remained with the North in the Civil War. 
The memory and legend of the Pony Express far outlives the short time it was in service. Several signs have recently been added along Highway 24, showing the approximate route of the Pony Express rider when he missed the ferry from Sacramento and had to come through Lafayette on his way to San Francisco. There are two signs on both East and West Highway 24 between Lafayette and the Caldecott Tunnel. Okay, and I just wanted to say thank you to my colleague, Mary Solon, for a lot of the information on the Pony Express. So now you know, and you all have a test that I have provided for you. Um, so hopefully, if you have questions, you know how to get a hold of me, but really appreciate um, being able to do this. Thank you very much. So Mary, oh, don't go yet. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Are there questions for Mary from the council members? From uh, public, anyone have any questions on presentation activities of the Historical Society? I have no speaker slips, Mayor Endery. No hands okay. raised in well, a virtual audience. What I was going to say is that the Lafayette Historical Society is just a tremendous resource for Lafayette. We're a very lucky community. We're a very lucky community to have an organization that's dedicated not just to collecting the physical reminders of what happened here on this space, but also uh, the uh, uh, the recordings, the interviews that they do that are just going to be much more valuable as time goes on. I would encourage everyone, if you have a chance, to visit the Historical Society's room, which is on the library campus on the on the first floor, and, and just see what's there. It's, it's very inspirational. And I know that the, the Historical Society continues to, to add to its collection and add to you know, being the, the resource that it is. So I just want to conclude by thanking you, Mary, for the leadership uh, that you've given to the society, not just for this year and the 175 plus celebration, which has been fantastic for the community, but for all that you've done for the historical society. Thank you.